Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about, we're finally going to get to the general definition of Lebesgue integral, um, which is, uh, which is uh, on measurable sets. So that's, that's the only, so blue is my assumptions here and then orange is the beginning of the definition. So a measurable set is a, is a or a measurable function is a non-negative function that has the following property. Given any measurable set in the codomain, its preimage is measurable in the in the domain uh, space. So in this case, that's the Borel sigma algebra on non-negative numbers and the Borel sigma algebra on the reals. But in in general, it's measurable in codomain means the preimage uh, is measurable in, in the domain uh, sigma algebra. So what we're going to do is we've already defined the integral for simple functions. So we just take the supremum over all simple functions that are less than or equal to the function f. And, and that's that's all the definition is. We've already built it on simple functions. Take a, take a supremum. Okay, so a natural question is, can I find phi n simple with uh, that are less than or equal to f such that phi n of x increases to f of x pointwise and the integral of phi n increases as a sequence of real numbers, right, uh, to this. And I claim yes, and that'll be the main uh, thing. Now that we've defined uh, the Lebesgue integral, uh, this is what I'd like to show you. Um, so this is a very thematic proof. Um, so really try to internalize this. Um, and it's, it's also a major result in and of itself. So, and it's, it's a super useful tool. So from now on, you can pretty much say, let phi n be a sequence of, of simple functions that converges to f. It increases. So f is measurable. That's my only assumption. Any measurable function has a, has a non-decreasing sequence of simple functions fn such that fn of x converges, increases pointwise to f of x, okay? And you can find uh, this construction in Real Analysis by Gerald Falland. That's where I learned this. Uh, I didn't consult uh, this, so the construction might be slightly different, but... Uh, regardless, uh, the idea is still the same. I'm pretty sure this is like, I'm pretty sure this is the exact construction. Um, so there's a lot going on with this expression. Okay. But the, this is all that's happening. Okay. So remember in Lebesgue integration, I'm cutting along my codomain. Okay. And then I'm taking pre images of those cuts along the codomain. So this is my cut. I have a mesh size of size one over two to the n, okay? Because I want to cut my subintervals in half at each level, okay? And then I just take a pre-image, right? And then I take an indicator function because I need the functions to be simple. So that's what's going on here. Two to the minus n or one over two to the n is my subinterval size cutting along the codomain. n times 2 to the n is my number of subintervals. So 2 to the n times 2 to the minus n is 1. So that's why I need to multiply by n so that I keep cutting higher and higher and higher and higher numbers along my codomain, typically the codomain is represented as your y-axis or your vertical axis. So I need to both make my subinterval size go to zero in a hierarchical fashion such that I cut my subintervals in half. That's basically going to guarantee my non-decreasing sequence part. That's why I need to cut in half. So the support of Fn is contained in the pre-image of zero to n is what's going on there. And then there's this value. Why did I pick that value? Well, this is a lower bound on what f of x is in this set. 
So that's also going to help me with showing that it's increasing and uh, that Fn uh, does in fact converge to F. So that particular choice is, is important. So we have two things to show, first this and this. But first I'd like to go through a visual of what this construction is actually doing. So let's zoom out here for a bit. Okay, so our construction is over here. Okay, so let's plug in n equals 1. n equals 1. 1 times 2 to the 1 is 2. Okay, so I'm going to have two terms in this sum at the first level. Okay, I'm going to define just for space issues. This g of x here, uh, semicolon a to b, tells me the subinterval that I'm cutting my codomain along. And then I take the pre-image of that set, indicator function uh, evaluated at that point x. So that's, that's just a notational convenience to save space. So that this construction here translated is 0 times g of x on the interval of 0 to a half plus 1 half g of x from uh, 1 half to 1. So what we do here is we uh, have the half, half, half closed interval here. So we look here to here, okay? If I see any purple, so the function is, is denoted purple in purple here. If I see any purple, I project whatever the function value is actually to construct f, I'm actually just going to project down to a lower bound. In this case, on this subinterval, it's 0. So here, I take all these points. I project them down. This is open. Uh, yeah, so this is open. Sorry. Oh, gosh. OK, so this is open here in orange. Okay, we're going to eventually close it. That's why I, I didn't want to do this live because it takes forever. So, um, and we project this down. This should definitely be open. Okay, what did I do here? Okay, this should definitely be open here. So that is because this, this is an open interval. That's a, that's definitely a hole. Yes, yeah, so that's a hole, okay? Then I go here from one half to one. Take all these functional values, okay? This is a hole here. because at this point, I'm equal to one, it's, an, it's a half open interval, so dashed line. So I don't include it. This one is solid because I'm solid to dashed now. So there's a hole down here, solid here. This is open. And then I say, well, I'm outside the interval zero to one. I'm at the first level, f sub 1. Outside of that, those pre-images, I'm just equal to 0. So now, this is equal to 0 for a different reason. This was originally an open hole, but now it gets closed. Because I have this. Okay, while well, I'm outside 0 to 1, I don't consider those points. Now, here's f2. I go 0, 0 to 1 fourth, I multiply by the left endpoint. 1 fourth to 1 half. I multiply by the end point, 1 fourth. 1 half to 3 fourths, left end point, and so on. Okay? So, same process here. Solid line, dashed line. Whenever I see purple here, inside that, that uh, cutting along the codomain, I project down to the smallest value here. So this is... Uh, 
open and open because I'm not actually, so the purple is supposed to be an open uh, thing here. I'm open there, so it stays open. Again, it's eventually gonna get closed because this three is outside my interval. So that eventually becomes closed. Then now I go from one fourth to dashed line here, okay? So I'm equal to one fourth solid. I'm equal to one fourth, I'm between one fourth and a half until eventually I hit here. I'm equal to a half. So this is open because again, this is a dashed line. Now I go one half to three fourths dashed. And then, so now I'm inside that, that interval solid because now this is closed so that there's no overlap between each sub interval and then i project down i project down onto one half the smaller of the two then this is open because now i'm exactly equal to three fourths and this is a dashed line and so on okay so hopefully you get the sense of the construction you can keep going and that's what you should roughly get um over the sub sub intervals but let's look at this particular case here this is why we have an increasing sequence, okay? Because I now cut, so on the first level, I'm zero to a half, okay? Whenever I'm, whenever I'm between there, all I do is I project down to the, the lower point here, okay? So in this case, I say, okay, well, between zero and one half, I really can't tell what the structure of F is here. I just say, oh, well, all I see is purple. I have no information. Just project down. I, I don't freaking know. But if I do this finer, uh, finer um, cutting of the codomain, well, I have two levels now. I say, oh, well, uh, between zero and a fourth, I don't care. If, if, as long as I see purple between zero and a fourth, eh, I'm just going to call that zero, Okay. If I'm between a fourth and a, and a half, oh, I'm just going to call that a fourth, right? But before, these lines were just mapped all the way down to zero. And so you can clearly see that on this subdomain, we increase. Here, we stay the same. Okay, so that's why the sequence is non-decreasing. And similarly, you can see how this green function approximates the function f a lot better. And then you'd, you'd see that the, the red one does. And then eventually you, you will get convergence. So now uh, rewind that if, if you need to uh, to get a better sense of what the construction is doing. So now we're just going to go through the proof. So let's first of all prove this, uh, this increasing part. Okay, so let's suppose f of x is in k. is in this, uh, okay, sorry, some one technical point, okay. So remember here in this construction, if, uh, so let's say for example that uh, I have n equals two, but f of x was up here at like two point, what I mean, it's like 2.9, then uh, f of x is not in any of these sub intervals. And remember that when we said at this level, if, if I only go up to level two, I only consider these. And then if I don't see any purple in this region, at, the, at those points, I'm just going to map to zero. And so, uh, so all I'm saying there is if f of x is greater than or equal to n, fn of x is, greater, is less than or equal to zero, which is less than or equal to fn plus one of x. Okay, so then we're done. Otherwise, so suppose fn of x is less than n. So the information is, is at least encoded in some degree, to some degree. So in that case, so, uh, we let k from one to n, two to the n, be such that f of x is in k minus one, over 2 to the n, 2k over 2 to the n. And, okay, so k minus 1 over 2 to the n is 2k minus 2 over 2 to the n plus 1. All I did is multiply and divide by 2. So do that with both endpoints here. 
This is 2k minus 2 over 2 to the n plus 1, 2k minus 1 over 2 to the n plus 1. So, right, we're splitting into two parts each time. So that's all I'm doing here is manipulating my algebra to get that, give that to me. Okay, so this tells me that f of x equals k minus 1 over 2 to the n, and fn plus 1 of x is in uh, 2k minus 2 over 2 to the n plus 1, 2k minus 1 over 2 to the n plus 1. Why? Because either f of x is in this subinterval, in which case it's equal to the left endpoint, or it's in this subinterval, in which case it's equal to this left endpoint. Okay, so that tells me that fn plus 1 of x is greater than or equal to 2k minus 2 over 2 to the n plus 1, which is k minus 1 over 2 to the n, which is fn of x. And so fn is, in fact, increasing. So let's go to a different page here now. So now let's show convergence. So same x that I'm fixing, okay? So let epsilon, so question mark. Let epsilon be positive. And, uh, and in the natural numbers with fn of x less than, uh, sorry, f of x less than n. and 1 over 2 to the n less than epsilon. We can choose n large enough such that that is the case. Pick n greater than n. OK, so that f of x is still less than n. So let k be between 1 and 2, n 2 to the n with f of x being in this closed interval. Very similar argument here. So fn of x is just equal to k minus 1 over 2 to the n. But that tells us that f of x minus fn of x is also equal to the absolute value. right? So f is greater than or equal to fn by construction. And this is less than 1 over 2 to the n, which is less than or equal to 1 over 2 to the n less than epsilon. And we're done. We get convergence there. OK, so there is a sequence of increasing functions such that, OK, so what we showed is this. We showed this. However, we did not. We absolutely did not show this. Okay, so this relies on something called uh, the monotone convergence theorem. Okay, which is what we'll show in the next video. Thank you guys for watching.